Good morning. Committee on Parole, we are reconvening. We're at West Staten Rouge Parish. Today is uh, Thursday, April 6, 2023. It's 8.23 a.m. Good morning, Mr. Harley. Is there a staff member in the room with you? Yes, yes ma'am. Warden Juge. Hey, Warden Juge. Uh, thanks for accommodating us this morning. No problem. Mr. Harley, would you tell us your name and DOC number, please? Joshua Harley. What number? DOC number. 7-1-2083. All right, and Mr. Harley, you're familiar with the process. You've been through this process before, so we're just going to jump right in. You're accused of, uh, well, do you have a parole revocation questionnaire? No, ma'am. I'll have that available to put up on the screen. You, we're going to put it up on the screen for you. You see. All right, let me just ask you some questions. Let me find, uh, can you read and write? That's my Do you understand the allegations against you? No, ma'am. No? Okay. What do you mean you don't understand them? Trying to figure out like what's the allegations. Well, I'm going to read them again to you in a minute, uh, and you and I'm going to ask you to enter a plea of guilty or not guilty, and then we'll have a discussion. If you have questions, you can ask them then. Are you? Uh, do you take any mental health medication? I used a while back, not anymore. Okay. Am I supposed to have a lawyer for this one? We're ready to proceed. I'm going to read the allegation. I'm going to ask you to enter a plea of guilty or not guilty. And then Mr. Freeman will have some questions for you. If you have questions about the allegations, you can ask them then. So you're accused of violating the conditions of your parole, specifically condition number 13, which says at your revocation hearing, December 6, 2022, in lieu of revocation, the parole board ordered you to complete a transitional work program. You failed to comply with those orders of the parole board in that you did not satisfactorily complete the program due to rule violation number 14, intoxication. How do you plead to violating condition number 13? Not guilty. Right, well, answer Mr. Freeman's questions then. Okay, Mr. Harley. Um... What's your explanation? I mean, they, they found you bumping into people. You couldn't walk. They tried to give you a field sobriety test. They couldn't even give it to you because all you could do was mumble. So what was the deal? All right. First of all, they pulled me out. They called me. They see me smoking a cigarette. And they called me and they said they thought I was drunk. So they made me blow in the breathalyzer test. Once I passed that, they say, no, you must have been smoking marijuana. I smelled marijuana back there. So they pissed me on a cup again. I passed that. And they pulled out another cup and said something about some synthetic and told me to piss in that. I passed that one too. So they made me sit there. They wrote me up, told me to go to my bunk. I went to my bunk. They called me the next morning and made me sign a write-up stating that I got a copy. They put me in the garden. They come get me out of the garden the next day. And brought me across here and I just been sitting here waiting. Pretty much every time I get up, I can't help the way I look. I don't know I look high all the time, but I just look how I look. That's just a look that's not gonna change. With them talking about, I talk with a mumble the same way I'm talking right now. They just said I was talking with a slurge and they never told me to do no sobriety test. 
whether to walk a line or whatever, would not to do all this. They never told me to do any of it. They just told me to sit in a chair and they handcuffed me to a chair. They got cameras over there. It's proof of all of this. The next morning going to work, I'm used to wearing slippers. I had on steel toe boots. I was trying to fix my little boot and I just took up, just start walking. Dude really backed into me. And for me to keep from falling, when he backed up into me taking his medication, I just grabbed him to hold on so we both don't fall. So they was like, oh, hey, you come here. You look high. You're not going to work and just made me stay in. I didn't argue with him or nothing. I just sat right there and just did what they told me to do because I get tired of going through the same process. You look high, you look high, you look low, you look low. And then here going, I take my, my lead test and I pass. It's still the same thing. Now, yeah, I'm guilty for when I was out for smoking marijuana when I was on. I smoked marijuana two times. The second time I urinated dirty. She sent me to the day reporting center. I go to the day reporting center. I enrolled. I was supposed to start the next day. Just so happened I came to jail that same day. Charge got dismissed. I've been in here since. Went in front of the board. Y'all sentenced me to six months work release. I thought once my charge would get dismissed, the whole would get taken off me and I'd go pick up where I left off. I never even got to go start my classes to the day reporting center. I never done nothing that bad to just be stuck You're in just talking scene. about uh, this incident at the West Baton Rouge work police. Uh, so that's your statement. You're saying you wasn't drunk at all, and even okay. though they found that you were intoxicated twice within a seven hour period, it's just the way you are. You mumble when you talk, and you. Uh, the same way I'm talking right now. Like that next morning, I wake up for four in the morning. They had me working in Gonzalez at Chef Falls. So we wake up at four in the morning every morning. We're really three, because we got to be out the door at about four. Three thirty, you got to eat breakfast. So uh, sometime I get up at about two, just so happen. I just kind of stayed a little sleep a little longer. But I jumped up. They called my name. I ain't even brushed my teeth. I really just hurry up, got dressed, and just shot it out the door. I missed breakfast and everything. Made it to the front. And that little situation just took place, and they just made me sit. They didn't just ask nothing. They just made me sit down. Said you're going in the garden. Stuck me in the garden. Come got me out the garden. It's too fast back to back. That's just like right now. Just when I came walking, yeah, this latest them just asked me the same thing. Guards my window. They sit in the front. They say, "Well, you must have just woke up." The same thing. The parole officer they sent over here for me to sign the paper. They asked me the same thing. It was like, "Oh, you must have just woke up." I can't help how I look, son. It ain't much to ban me out doing, just keep me locked in like kids and like animals. I do have responsibilities and children out there, but you already have your decision made. That was a terrible last statement, by the way. Uh, I sure was leaning not to revoke you, but uh, we already got our decision made. I'll just go with the paper. Well, I say they already had the decision made, not y'all. Mr. Carly. They had the decision made for what they was doing. Mr. Carly? Ma'am. Hang on. Mr. Rush, I have a question. Yes. Uh, Mr. Good morning. Juan June. Is he still there with you? Yeah, I'm yes, here. Ma'am. Good morning, Miss Alvin. How you doing, Juan June? Can, I'm, can, I'm good, and yourself? Good. Can you explain the write-up to us, please? Uh, no, I can't. I don't have it here. It was done at work release, and I was out at the warden's conference. Just got back this morning, and uh, just seeing that this hearing was scheduled uh, this morning when I walked in the door. And, so we logged on immediately. Uh, basically, this write-up was imposed. Am I correct? Let's see, talking to me, Miss Al. No, I'm saying, did you go to disciplinary court? No, sir. But you did sign. Yeah, they told me sign to say a statement that I had got a copy, like that I was aware of that I had got the right of. So I didn't want to like refuse or be like, you know, I just don't be want to make matters worse. So I just signed it. And they just barred me. They put me in the garden. And when they put me in the garden, they just come got me out the garden, like from doing that onion stuff. They just got me out the garden and barred me over here. They told me I just had to wait. So like I just been sitting. In the okay. Garden. All right, Mr. Carly. You have some folks who joined us this morning. We have your sisters, Dijon and Ariane, both who want to speak on your behalf. Can we hear from Ms. Ariane?
Well, being that I was actually listening to everything, it's not much that I have to actually say. Um, just was actually concerned about the work release program as many times as I called to see who had information on anything that was going on. Um, why did no one not have any information on what happened at the work release program to where they could not provide it? Okay. All right. Well, thank you, ma'am. Uh, Mr. John Smith. Um, I'm here. Uh, Anything you'd like to say? No, ma'am. Okay. Uh, I think we are prepared for that, Mr. Freeman. Okay. Uh, Mr. Harley, you, you, you're saying, uh, did you ever have a drinking problem? I mean, did you drink when you was on the street? I mean, no, I like that. I'm okay. probably like for certain little games or something like that. I'd probably, you know, do a little like everybody else would do, but I didn't ever, I don't have no drinking problem or nothing like that. It's, it's uh, obviously, you know, they, they, they claimed you were drunk. We, we have no physical evidence proving that you were intoxicated. My recommendation today is to change his in lieu of revocation and that he attend the Steve Hall Substance Abuse Clinic. Mr. Rochet. Um, Mr. Harley, I'm going to trust the integrity of the corrections officer at the West Baton Rouge Parish Detention Center. You were removed from the transitional work program. You received a write-up for intoxication. That write-up was verified by you because you signed it. And I'm going to revoke your supervision because you were in violation of condition number 13. All right, Mr. Harley. We're voting. Mr. Harley, um, my vote today also would be to change the in lieu of revocation from work release to go to the Steve Wall program. Uh, I think you would benefit from that. Uh, you've received two votes in lieu of revocation to uh, be sent to the Steve Wall program, one vote to revoke your parole. Um, so today, in lieu of revocation, you'll be sent to the Steve Hall program. You have to complete that program, and then you have all the same special conditions as you did before. Good luck to you, sir. What kind of program is that? How long is it going to be for? I think that concludes our business at West Baton Rouge. One Juge, thanks for accommodating us today. It's 8.35 a.m. Well, to answer his question, I think it's about a nine month program. Uh, for substance abuse, that was actually quite an interesting hearing. And again, sorry for, I am uh, camping with my family. It's like, um, so I'm using a headset, it's 4 a.m. And I just wanted to get these hearings out to you guys. So please do apologize. The please do um, I apologize for the appearance and for whispering so I recognize him and during the hearings I was looking through the older uploads to try to find it you know the search feature in YouTube is awful which is which is kind of mind-boggling being that that YouTube is owned by Google but you can put in, I, just that's it, it just leave, sneezed. You can put in the search bar a name or anything and it just won't show up. Don't know why. That's also why I sometimes publish duplicates because there's no good way to search in YouTube dashboard for um, content. It's just awful. So I tried to manually find it, but I wasn't doing everything in order by date. So it's possible that even though he does revocation hearing and 
December, it's possible I didn't upload it until February, so it's not so simple to find it, but man, he looks really familiar. Um, so I would love to find it and then maybe merge these two hearings together. But it's interesting. He's, he's saying, um, I can't help the way I look. I look high all the time. And hey, I was, I, I, you know, he has a point because I thought he was kind of high when he came into this hearing. But I, I mean, I would beg to argue with him and say, no, sir, you might not. You know, certain, certain people do seem to be high all the time. I, mean, I think everyone has a friend that no matter where he is, he seems high or she seems high. And um, what, what someone can change is their attitude. They can change their attitude. Uh, or they could say, you know what, I just don't want to look high anymore. Maybe I will change. You know, I'm out in the public. I'm I'm at work release. I need to be acting a certain way. So you put in the effort to to do that, or you can just, you know, remain the victim. But on the other perspective, if he was authentically not doing anything wrong and he's just tired and um and uh, being accused of doing something he didn't do. I could sense the frustration, but at the same time, you're in prison because of all... Really, you were given, like, kind of a golden ticket with, I think, just having to complete six months work release and then getting home. You couldn't do that properly, and now you're acting like a, like a full-grown baby in front of the parole board, like whining and moaning and throwing a tantrum. And uh, and he did something which I've, I may have only seen one other time, which is he got Mr. Freeman to get real wild up. And that, take, that takes skill. And I do think he said, I didn't listen to it again, but I do think Mr. Freeman was right. I do think he said, y'all, already have your minds made up. And then when Mr. Freeman got upset, he changed it, his words around. I'm telling you, it takes a skill to get Mr. Freeman upset. Uh, and the idea that they're sending him to uh, Steve Hoyle again, I, I, I'm pretty sure it's, 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 the, it's a money thing. Um, it, it costs a decent amount of money to send an inmate there and there's something going on where it just seems like the board is just too motivated to send people to Steve Oil. And they're just assuming that this guy has a major intoxication problem, but what are they going to do, right? He failed He failed out of the work release. The bottom line is you need to trust the guards there. Whether Do I believe that there's a good chance that he was sober if he actually did... Uh, piss clean and they just decided yeah absolutely it is a super high flawed system and and a guard can certainly screw up an inmate's life if they want to but with his attitude the board didn't exactly feel like I guess you know they, they just didn't want to send them back and uh, they thought the next best bet was just to send them to uh, to Steve Oil now he's got to do nine months there <laughs> And um, with his attitude, you almost wonder if he, if he'll make it through that one. But yes, yeah, certainly interesting. Love to hear your thoughts on this. With that, I'll let you go.